Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today I am going to get a jump on my late spring, early summer hanging baskets. So what I'm going to do today is, I'll, this is a perk of having a greenhouse. I will admit that, right? What I'm going to do today is I am going to go ahead and plant my hanging baskets that will go across the front of my house and ones that will go on the back of our house. I have done this for the last couple of years um, because we do have the greenhouse space. I can go ahead and plant the hanging baskets, leave them in the greenhouse until the threat of frost has passed. They start to grow and get really happy. And then when the time is appropriate, I can come ahead and take them out and hang them on my porch. And I have these gorgeous hanging baskets. Now, if you don't have a greenhouse, obviously, I completely understand that. Um, but I did think this might be fun for you to watch because I've never filmed me doing this before. But I thought maybe this would be helpful for you if you're like me and you're starting to plan um, your beds and your containers and your hanging baskets and you want a little bit of inspiration and maybe you want to learn how to create your own hanging basket. So that is what the goal is for today. I have on our front porch, I have four hanging baskets and on the back porch, I have two. I'm gonna do one recipe for the front and one recipe for the back, just because that just kind of satisfies that I can use different plants and makes me very happy. Both of these hanging baskets um, have come from Kinsman Garden Company. If you've been around me for any length of time, you know how much I absolutely love their products. One, probably the main reason is extremely high quality products. They will last you for years and years and years. This is going to be my third year using the ones on the front porch. And these are my original cocoa liners. They have lasted this long. They are not worn out. They are not thin and they still look good. Why spend money on replacing them when I don't have to? So one huge reason why we love Kinsman. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and get started on this one. This is the one that will be on the front porch. Last year, I shared with you a little um, tip trick that I learned from reading one of the gardening magazines and about putting compost in the bottom of containers. I'd already made up my hanging baskets last year, but I'm going to do it this year. So I have my compost. I have the good old land and sea that we love and adore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you step by step on for one basket for each the front and the back and then I'll just put the other ones together. So this is a hanging basket that is I'll give you the exact dimensions on the screen but I'm going to say it's probably 14 to 16 inches in diameter and you can see the depth on it. It's pretty you know, it's, it's not it's not a wimpy hanging basket by any means. I'm going to put my land and seat in the bottom, about the bottom third. And then I'm going to top it off with the Proven Winners potting soil. The reason that you're putting compost, not yet, yeah, compost on the bottom is because once the roots of the plant hit that layer, it's an extra shot of energy form, retains moisture the whole nine yards. When you're dealing with your hanging baskets, you want to get the biggest hanging basket that you can find for your space that it allows and you want to fill it completely all the way up with potting soil. Do not put anything in the bottom, um, especially with hanging baskets. Um, don't put anything in the bottom that where you're trying to save on potting soil, right? Because that is going to um, kind of bite you in the rear later on in the season because you want as much soil for your plants as possible. Holds the moisture, it holds the food and so forth. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to use three different kinds of mini vistas. I have got mini vista indigo, I have got mini vista white, 
And what I am doing here, we're gonna use a total of six plants in this hanging basket. This one's a little long, but she's fine. Put her in there. And then we're gonna use Mini Vista Violet Star, which is down here on the bottom. You can clearly tell that these all, I think all three of these, maybe all three of these were started at different times. That's why I'm going ahead and doing this now so that they can catch up with one another. When you're using multiple plants, the best way to kind of make sure you have even distribution of the, the flowers is to plant the same plant directly across from each other. So my mini Vista Indigo is directly across from each other. My mini Vista White is directly across from each other and mini Vista Violet Star. Okay, so they're all in line with each other. That way when they start growing, you'll ha you won't just have a blob of white here and a blob of dark purple over here. So there we go, that's what you do. And at this point, basically you just plop and plant, right? Um, there we go. If you do not, one, have access to proven winners near you, like you're, you, don't, you don't have garden centers that don't have it, you just can't, um, you can't find the proven winners that you want. You can always, of course, order them online. Proven Winners does ship. Um, there's other companies that also ship proven winter plants. Creekside is not one of them. Uh, so we do not ship. But I would encourage you to check out Proven Winners because they have this really neat product called a flower pillow and a flower pillow basically is a pre-made recipe like this they have it's like close to 30 different recipes I think that they have available on their website they have all these recipes that are pre-made for you and they come in these little plastic trays that you pop out of the tray and you just plant it directly in the middle of your hanging basket or a container or if it allows, you can also put it in the landscape. Years ago, when Jerry and I were first getting into Proven Winners, and I saw these flower pillows, and I was very intrigued by the whole thought process of this. So I ordered two different ones. And oh my goodness, that was the neatest thing. It comes to you in this great little container. They're all filled out as a total of, I believe, five different plants are in this little flower pillow. And essentially, they are in a, um, a little mesh bag that kind of reminds you of like a tea bag. And so all those roots will just grow right through it. And I literally took the flower pillow, took it out of the plastic container, and put it in the middle of my container. And within a very short amount of time, I had this massive, gorgeous, mixed arrangement that lasted me all season long. So if you have, if you're interested in that, if it's, if it's too daunting for you to try to think about one, either coming up with your own recipe or you can't find proven winners, um, I really would encourage you to go check out those flower pillows. They, they're really fun. Um, so here we go. We got one last one. This is the Mini Vista White. Now, you know you can prune your petunias. So I'm gonna come in here because little white here, for some reason, she was just a little eager beaver and got a little ahead of the game. So I'm gonna just prune her back just a little bit so that she can get a little bit more compact and not be quite what we call leggy in here. That way she's more in line with everybody else and she won't you know, outgrow somebody too fast. We want them all to grow together. Um, when you're choosing your containers, your, your recipes rather, you want to find plants that kind of have the same growth habit. You don't want one that's a slow grower and one that's a really super vigorous one. They don't play well together very well. All right, now again, ta-da, it's all done. Here at the beginning, you're like, okay, it's not really spectacular, but that's the point, right? That way it can grow and be very happy and get all friendly and intermingled with each other here in the greenhouse come our last frost date is april the 15th once that april 15th date comes then i can take this beautiful hanging basket as all filled in together 
nice and full when it is spectacular and immediately hang it on my front porch and it will be gorgeous. So I've got this one done. I've got four more to do. It's going to be the exact same method. I'm just going to bada boom, bada bing and get them knocked out. And then we'll do the ones for the back porch, which is going to be a completely different recipe. The four hanging baskets for the front porch all potted up and they are done. Um, and so now we're going to move on to the back porch. A little bit of a different container, still really about the same um, diameter at the top. This has a nice flat bottom, therefore I don't need the bucket to hold up my container. So I can just put those down and basically we're going to do, well not basically, we are going to do the exact same method fill up the bottom third with compost and the top two thirds with potting soil. You may have noticed that I did not add any um, slow release fertilizer to these containers. I'm not going to do that yet because one, I'm using the Proven Winners potting soil, so it already has the slow release in there. Then we're also going to be hanging these in the greenhouse, so it will be on their, the greenhouse cycle of water and fertilizing. So these are going to have plenty of food via the greenhouse. Now, once they move to the back porch, front porch, then I will go ahead and add my slow release in there and begin my regimen of the Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer because food equals flowers. Now, in the back, this is again, is going on the back um, porch right there at the patio. And if you've been around for very long, you know that that patio, I'm trying to stay in those very cool light colors because we are mostly only out there either very early in the morning or really night, like evening, nighttime. I won't even say late afternoon because it is so extremely hot right there. So when we are out there, the light conditions are very low. So I want bright colored flowers that will re reflect either light from the landscape lighting or the um, fire pit. It just makes it a cooler environment and the plants actually show up better as opposed if I were using that indigo um, it wouldn't show up very good at night. So again we're going to repeat and use the mini vista white petunia in here. They're going on opposite sides of each other. I'm going to do a little bit of a different um, thing here and right in the beginning you may be going well Jenny that just looks odd. You have to trust me on this. My thriller for this container is going to be the diamond frost euphorbia. I have used this a gazillion times, landscape containers, hanging baskets, and it will get nice and big and very airy. It will intertwine with the petunias and just give it a little bit of height in here. Gorgeous presence in the container. What I'm also going to use is right here beside of me, and this is the white knight alyssum. Lobularia, all the same thing. Sweet alyssum, and you can tell that it is, huh, they like to get friendly with one another. Um, trying not to rip the, oh, we just had to do it. All right, 
So these are obviously a trailing plant. You say, well, these are leggy. Not really, they are a major trailer. So we're gonna put them on opposite ends from one another. So we have this all white container. This is what we call monochromatic. Mono meaning one, chromatic color, one color. So all white, white and green is going in here. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna plant this one and then I've got the other one to do. And then I'll meet you back here in just a second. Okay, my friends, so I have got the back porch hanging baskets all planted up. I've got little pollinators just all over the white night and the diamond frost, so much fun. Obviously, I will keep you up um, updated on how both of these planters are doing. I did go ahead and water these two baskets in because they are sitting upright so I can get them well watered in. The other four, once I get them up into the production greenhouse and get them hung up, then I will get the hose and water them in as well. So really the maintenance on this right now is just hang them up in the greenhouse. They'll be hooked up to the irrigation fertigation system. Um, so they'll get plenty of food and water on a regular basis, nice warm sun, and they should just take off and be quite happy. Again, we're looking at probably four weeks in the greenhouse until I'm able to move them out. Um, but yeah, super simple. Um, check out Proven Winner's website. If you're interested in those flower pillows, I will have all of that link in the video description. Um, so you can check those out. If you're interested, go, go get you some. They are a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the two that I had gotten um, a couple of years ago. Lots of fun. Um, but again, remember, check out the Proven Winners website if you have a plant that you know you want to use. For me, it was the Mini Vista White. Like, I knew that I wanted to use the white petunia because it's not as vigorous as, say, like Snowdrift. Um, I tend to like the petunias a little bit better than Calibrachoas. Don't ask me why. I just do. Maybe it's because the blooms are bigger for a hanging basket. Um, so I just went there, checked out their website, went to Mini Vista White, scrolled to the very bottom where it says recipes, clicked on recipes, and then they just give you all sorts of fantastic options um, using that particular plant. And they do that with all of their plants. So you can look at that. Uh, but yeah, hope y'all have a great day. Hope you've learned something, been a little bit inspired. If you can, get outside and enjoy the sunshine. It is wonderful. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.